Good morning, Renuka, or maybe it's good evening there. Anyway, hey, how are you? And hello, Eric. Hi, Mom. Professor Eric, I understand you are going to uh, give us a lesson on how to recognize our karmic lessons. And I think that sounds really fascinating. So you got the mic. Go for it. You're saying yes, Mom, much awaited. Uh, all the questions and all the confusions have been uh, where karma is concerned have been then if karma is lesson how do we even know what a particular relationship is trying to teach us how do we even learn this lesson and balance the karma and fulfill the contract because right from the beginning we have been talking about karma we have been discussing karma is nothing but lesson but finally today we'll understand why karma is a lesson how this lesson is to be learned and eventually how do we balance this karma in our spiritual context. Right. We think we discussed, think we discussed our karmic cycle uh, last lecture. That was okay. important for us to understand how a karmic cycle starts, how souls enter into spiritual contracts in the spirit world and how these contracts get manifested in form of relationships here in the physical world and how this karma gets activated. So you think, mom, one thing is very important for us to understand that throughout our relationships, our souls have not chosen to live a contract. The okay. karma that we have chosen in our contract, the lessons that we have chosen to be exchanged between both the parties in a contract gets activated at a particular point of time where all the situations come together. There are a lot of permutations and combinations. What the either parties are feeling in the relationship, the circumstances around them, the other spiritual contracts which are linked to their spiritual contracts. There are a lot of permutations and combinations for a spiritual contract to get activated. That's why relationships won't be difficult all your lives. And if they are getting difficult continuously and they are getting stretched over a period of time, there's something wrong that you are doing. Either the karma has been activated and you're not able to understand and recognize the lessons. Because once the lessons are learned, the problems cease. Once the problems in the relationship cease, again, it depends on the spiritual contract, whether you have chosen to continue in that given relationship or maybe separate. Now that's a different story, but it's very important for us to understand that not every time karma is activated in our relationship. There are specific times. And I have said a number of times that when either of the party is getting triggered by the other okay. without the intention, without the intention of the other party, that definitely means the karmic phase has been activated. Yeah. So before trying to understand what is the lesson the opposite person is trying to teach me or what is a pertaining lesson to a particular relationship, it is very important for us to understand whether the karmic phase in a given relationship is activated or not. Okay. Otherwise, you will keep searching for lesson in a relationship when the relationship is going smooth and the karmic phase has not been activated. It is meant to go smooth. It is meant to you know relate with each other build feelings and emotions for each other as a base for when the karma will get activated so you're saying mom karma means if i if i always say karma means lessons lessons can only be learned if you feel if you what if you feel feel you, yes right you cannot learn until you don't feel mm -hmm. anything mom i've always said Karma is always pertaining to relationships, not to situations, even though you feel through situations, but there is no relationship for us to balance the lesson or a spiritual contract. So if karma means relationships, and if karma means lesson, and to learn a lesson, we have to feel. Mom, you see, every relationship is based on emotions and feelings. You don't of get course. into a relationship if there is no emotion and feeling. So that's well, how all of it robots, is connected. With robots, maybe. But yeah, yes. of course. And feelings can be very painful and, and prod us to learning some sort of lesson. One thing I'm seeing a lot of, and maybe we can use this as a, um, as a sort of a generic way to describe exactly what you mean. 
I see a lot of adult kids uh, estranged from their parents by their choice. And it's very sad. And a lot of times people email me and said, I, I don't know why they never answer my calls, et cetera, et cetera. So, Mom, that's what exactly I'm trying to say. Yeah. I well, let's use that as a good a tangible example then. Yeah. Yes, yes. So true. So true. He's saying, Mom, do you know what that signifies? That just signifies that the karma, at least from the child, the children's side, is done with. That's why they they don't feel anything. That's why they are able to detach and estrange themselves. Okay. But on the other side, the parent is still feeling the pain. That means the lesson for the parent is still pending to be learned. So you see, emotion is the base for karma because without emotion or feeling, you will never learn. Without feeling, you will never learn. And until you don't learn, karma will not get balanced. So all of it is connected. Hence, he says that every relationship is karmic relationship. Every relationship you enter because you got to learn something from it. You don't come here to just live relationships. You know, you don't come here to just feel the good part of the relationships or the bad or the so-called bad part. You come because and you choose these relationships because there is an agenda to it. There's an agenda of learning and experiencing and growing and you both are exchanging that <coughs> learning and ex learning and experiences so well, said, but, but, but certainly there's a, a um, instances where the adult kid kids whatever um are angry about something maybe a miscommunication you know misconception etc and so they are feeling hostility and resentment etc and that is the reason they estrange uh, you know from their yeah. parents yeah, so he's saying, Mom, there are two aspects to it. Until you're feeling, until you're feeling for a particular relationship, for a particular, um, uh, you know, person in your life. Now, whatever that kind of feeling, be, a, be it a so-called positive one or be it a so-called negative one, karma is still there. Karma is still activated. It is still not done. If so whoever, emotion, so if whoever say, feels the uncomfortable feeling is the one that, and it could be on both sides of the relationship. The one who yes. feels who need whose karma is activated, and they need to, you know, figure out. Yeah, need to understand and recognize the lesson. He's saying when I say you stop feeling, I don't mean even good feelings. I mean indifference. Nothing affects you. Nothing shakes you. Nothing moves you, pertaining to that relationship or that person. If you're, even if you're feeling love and attachment, karma is still there. You still need to do it. Even if you're yeah. feeling so-called hostility and anger, karma is still there. If you reach a stage where you feel nothing, where you feel detached, where you feel indifferent, I'm sure this must be true for so many of our viewers, no matter what equation they are on, whether they are a parent or a child, you just stop feeling anything. You just become numb. You just feel indifferent and you just want to draw boundaries just to stay peaceful. He's saying that's where you can say your karma is balanced because there is no emotion. Well, I don't understand. What, can't, you, can't you feel love for your child and not have uh, and have perfect karmic balance? So when I say love, we have always said unconditional love will never figure where karma is concerned. Unconditional love is something very divine. You're not expecting anything. It doesn't trouble you. Right. You don't trouble the other person. It's attachment which troubles you. So if okay. you're feeling attachment, if you're feeling attachment, the karma is still there. If you're feeling conditions, love, conditions behind your love, then yeah. there's still karma. Okay, I got it. But unconditional love is a form right. of karmic de uh, uh, detachment. Then yes. yes okay. Where saying, but mom, let's let's accept. Uh, mothers will feel it, but not most of us will feel in any of our relationships. It's very difficult to feel unconditional love because of the karma that is that we bring in in our relationships. You know, it's difficult for us. That's right. the kind of karma and exchange we have brought in. And after you go through that painful exchange to learn, it's very difficult for our minds to feel unconditional love. And he's saying, I'm not saying humanity is not capable of unconditional love. I'm just saying the way everything is designed, it's very difficult for the human mind to feel that because you're loaded with so many impressions, not only from this lifetime, but from your past lifetime also, whatever relationships you have had with that particular person, 
and if there were negative shades to it that is still in your soul that is still getting operated while yeah. you're going through karma with that person so you think it's very difficult yes it's easier for mothers you know because the bond is such right? yes. it's easier for mothers to feel unconditional love no matter what your children do yeah. mothers will feel it'll be it'll get a little bit easier for them but trust me mom nowadays even with mothers the karmic relationships have have gotten to be very very negative and very karmic mm-hmm. you know where a lot of difficult lessons are involved and you being a mother it gets difficult to feel unconditional love for the child because you're hurt so much by your own child yeah i make exchange is such so exactly. so you saying mom it's very subjective i'm not saying it's impossible but yes it's getting to be more rare in today's world because the karma is only getting difficult and heavier for every soul coming in so you saying all i'm trying to say is mind is the seat for emotions until you don't feel you will not enter into a relationship and okay. until you don't enter into a relationship the spiritual contract the karmic contract won't get activated until the karmic contract does not get activated your learning will not start the exchange of learning and experiencing won't start so you see mom actually emotion is the base for karma yeah because only when you feel you enter a relationship only when you enter a relationship do you have a chance to experience and exchange lessons from each other again okay. you cannot experience or exchange lessons if you don't feel for each other exactly you know for example what do happen what does happen when uh, with couples you know they fall into this romantic trap mm-hmm. where they get attracted towards each other if right. they don't get attracted towards each other they won't enter into a relationship but that's actually a karmic trap oh. that's actually that's actually karma trapping them so that they start feeling for each other they come into a relationship and that's when the karmic contract starts yeah makes sense and that's where <laughs> the emotions the little bickering and fighting and you know positive you know yeah i get it mm-hmm. you think so initially you will see no love in that <laughs> Pardon me. Uh oh, you froze. Initially, you will be in that. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Right. So he's saying initially it will be the honeymoon phase. You know where you will see no wrong in the other person. You only feel love and attachment and desire and lust and all kinds of romantic feelings. Initially, you'll see no wrong in that person, and we have seen it with so many couples because. that's a kind of a trap where they feel all of these things and while they are going through that stage they commit to each other and they get married and once they are married all of this goes out of the window and that's when the learning starts which is obviously bound to be difficult right so he's saying emotions are the trap emotions are the basis for karma <coughs> and if you don't feel you will not get attracted to the person and until you don't get attracted to a person you will not enter into a relationship until you don't enter into a relationship karmic karmic contract won't get activated and until that does not get activated the learning will not happen and that's the point of it now this is about the romantic relationship but with other relationships you know it just happens he saying mom you will not feel for every tom dick and harry that comes to your life of course not if you feel there is karma right because that feeling that emotion will be used to teach you yeah so you think that's why we don't feel with with everybody who passes our life but and also you know you feel in different intensities with different people because you have chosen different lessons to be learned from different relationships the right. more in the emotion the more intense the emotion the more intense the lesson you have chosen to learn from Oh, oh, you're freezing a little bit sometimes. Well, I'm going to uh, talk. So, I guess the most karmic uh, relationship would be couples so, it, and also kids. Uh, you know? Yeah, now you're, yeah, you're unfrozen. Okay. So, okay. Um, yeah, he's saying, uh, "Mom, the nature and type of relationship does not matter. The okay. intensity of the emotion does. You might feel." Uh, more intensely for your child you might feel more intensely for your best friend rather than your sibling yeah, yeah it's about the, 
It's about it intensity about, of emotion. Yes. Okay. So more intense the emotion. He's saying, Mom, because until you don't love that person as much, that person won't be able to hurt you or give you pain for you to learn that difficult lesson. Right. So again, very psychologically, you know, very connected. He said, right. even spiritually and esoterically, but even psychologically, it makes sense. Okay. If you don't feel for a particular person and that person hurts you, you won't feel as much hurt as compared to a person whom you love the most hurts you. Yeah. So those whom you love the most stand to teach you the most. Right. So the intensity of the emotions matter. And now that we are talking about, uh, you know, trying to recognize the lessons we and we understand that emotion is the base for karma. Mm -hmm. If we want to recognize the lesson, we have to look at our emotions and feelings. Okay. Which base emotion is being triggered? Which feeling is being triggered? And that will lead to your lesson. Also, he's saying, Mom, don't forget these emotions and feelings are very complicated. At any given point of time, you'll feel a certain emotion for some person and you'll be at loss to understand why are you feeling it. Right. Maybe the intensity, maybe the nature of the emotion. You'll feel, oh, this is not me. Or why am I feeling this? I have never felt this before. Or what is this emotion? I've never felt this before. Why am I not able to comprehend or process this emotion? Or control this emotion he's saying oh. that's because mom that's because every emotion and feeling is based on the mind the mind is the seat for every emotion and feeling now this mind the subconscious mind does not only have impressions we call impressions sanskaras in our indian sanskrit language okay you see the impressions oh, yeah okay are, yeah <coughs> see, impressions are not only stored in the subconscious by the experiences and the conditionings of this present life, but also from our past lives. Okay. So you see, that's, there's so much going on when you're feeling something which, you do, which you're not aware about. Okay. Uh-oh. which is coming from the subconscious okay. and see the conditionings and experiences. So he's saying, uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, if, if you and me were related in a past life and mm -hmm. if I was your mother, if mm -hmm. I was your mother, so I would have those motherly feelings. I have gone through those motherly feelings with you and that stores, that gets stored in my soul. Right. Now, then the soul leaves the body the soul is still taking into its consciousness all the feelings and emotions. Oh, okay. Whatever it went through. Now, when my similar soul, when me as a soul takes on another body in another lifetime, the emotions, the motherly emotions for you are still stored in my consciousness, okay. which get transferred to my mind, the subconscious mind, not the conscious mind, because I have forgotten my past life. Oh, yeah. Now, in this lifetime, if I happen to have a spiritual contract with you, and if we meet, and supposedly we are friends, now right. we might be friends, we might be friends, but I will have all these motherly feelings for you. I'll be protective about you. I'll take care of you. I love you. It will all come naturally because my feelings are triggered from those past life feelings, which are in my subconscious mind. Now, I might not know why am I feeling all of these things? But I will feel it very naturally once we meet and our karmic contract is activated. I will very naturally feel and our relationship will reflect that. Right. Although we are best friends, but that relationship will reflect like I will act like your mother. That's interesting because I, I do see uh, families where one of the kids seems to be take on the mother role over a parent mm -hmm. or the father role, mostly the mother role of, um, of their parent. So, uh, yeah, it's cool. What about, you know, since there is no time, what about karma from future lifetimes? Does that exist? He's saying, so what is happening is it's all overlapping each other. So if okay. you are, if you're balancing something in the future, it will definitely affect your karmic pattern here and it might get easier or difficult depending on it. But it's all going in a linear time. 
So okay. one thing will affect the other, and it might get easier or difficult. And yes, it does influence the feelings and okay. the emotions that you will feel. Okay, interesting. That is for sure. So, but he's saying, mom, feelings and emotions are the are the important base to recognize our lessons. Like I said, we know that the karma is activated when you get triggered. And when I'm saying you are getting triggered, it means your emotions and feelings are getting triggered. Yeah. Okay. That's where the karma is activated. So if I'm saying karma is activated, you are getting triggered means the emotions, the heaviest intense emotions are coming to the surface for you to recognize what to learn from them. And mom, again, if I have learned my lessons, these emotions and feelings will stop triggering me or troubling me okay. automatically. If I'm low, if I meant, if I'm feeling a uh, hurt, if I'm feeling betrayed, and if I forgive you, now this hurt and this betrayal is troubling me a lot. It's triggering me. Okay, it's triggering my emotions and feelings. And I recognize my lesson is to forgive. And if I forgive you, don't you think these emotions will die off? They will stop troubling me. Right. It's all connected. I have learned my lesson, the emotion goes away. Until I'm not learning my lesson, the emotion will keep triggering me. So right. you're saying emotion is the base. Every relationship is based on emotion. Every relationship, hence, is a karmic relationship. You don't enter into relationships for nothing. You enter to learn and experience. Even the good feelings, the so-called good feelings that we experience in relationships, they are also making us experience. Right. Every relationship has an agenda, either to learn through the so-called pain and suffering that we exchange, or either to experience the good positive things that we exchange again. Exactly. So he's saying... We have to remember emotions <coughs> are in our mind. The mind is influenced by a lot of subconscious impressions, not only from this lifetime, but from the past also. So not every time you'll be able to understand what you're feeling in a particular relationship. You really have to sit with yourself and process your emotions and feelings. And these emotions and feelings, when triggered, when they get really intense, these will give you your lessons. These will point out to what you're trying to learn yeah, so, so, many people, so many people it, you know, stuff their emotions they're too painful they don't want to deal with them and it, it gets trapped in their energy trapped emotions and that can lead to illness dis, disease trauma. dis-ease trauma a lot of trauma yeah, so, they carry so much trauma that yeah. forget balancing the karma in that particular relationship they sabotage so many other good relationships yeah that's okay. the problem with uh, with today's generation also, where they, you know, they run away from their emotions and feelings. They don't process it. He's saying, well, then that's why you see so much chaos in the world, because instead of balancing karma, there is no awareness. We are only, you know, building it more and more and every lifetime it gets difficult. You see relationships have gone for a toss compared to uh, older times, you know. Yeah. Relationships have become more complicated, more difficult, more difficult yes. to sustain and live them. He's saying, because karma is going on building, that itself shows, you know, the state of affairs right now with our relationship, it itself shows that karma is not being balanced. It's being pushed to the background. There is no awareness. And that's why relationships are getting more and more difficult because the lessons pertaining to these relationships are getting more and more difficult. It's out there for us to see. You know, it's proven out there right. what he's talking about. But on the other hand, we as a collective are in the world of self-help and we've we have learned from others tools to express our emotions etc yes to be more open we have a therapist you know helping us that yeah. makes therapy is very and that, important yeah. and they didn't have that in the 50s much you know yeah. they had psychiatrists that would give you pills but uh but so there wasn't a lot of processing yeah. of emotions back then Thing. I'm talking about therapy which only counsels you with your emotions and feelings that I think he's saying that's I think what is needed most because it helps you understand and face your emotions right I think there's so much available it only it really matters what if individual school is planning to do choose the soul plan and face up to the lessons and the emotions yeah. or suppress the emotions and run away from it uh, but he want, he's wanting to close with one important announcement. He's saying, I know it's easier said than done. I've said recognize the base emotion, recognize the feeling, and recognize when you're getting triggered and you'll know your lesson. But he's saying we'll go uh, more in-depth into it and he will try and guide more with it. He's saying uh, the next lecture we'll keep for, you know, uh, 
explaining how to uh, discover the lesson through the base emotion which is getting triggered so he is saying for this video if you if they can post in the comments what are they feeling the base emotion in our next lecture he will sort out few of those base oh, good. and yeah and he saying he saying see if you people can directly sit for a session and you know he can go to akashic record and tell them okay this is your lesson in this particular major contract relationship it's easier for him he's like just sit for a session ask me and you're done of course learning is your job but i can tell you this is the lesson but he's saying then uh, but again we are talking about empowerment here we are talking about wisdom here we are talking about becoming aware and enlightened so he is going to teach a practical process of how to come and arrive to a lesson okay yeah so what are some some of the basic ways that we can figure out what our spiritual lessons are with an, other people in our lives go through a medium a, a regressive hypnoregression um inner child work what are some good ways to figure it out if you can't by self reflection figure it out on your own you got frozen must be chilly over there renuka oh so um and i don't know about other media okay uh oh oh there you come back something happened go ahead so i don't know what other mediums do but you know the way we do is uh, uh, people sit across for sessions to you know tackle about uh, tackle one major karmic relationship which is troubling them the most and right. eric exposes the akashic records for them and gives them okay. the lessons directly you know, right. holds their hand throughout the karmic thing how to learn the lesson how to approach the relationship how to make it easier and how to make sure that that relationship stops triggering them how to make sure the lessons are done and the karma is balanced and of course he keeps a watch if it's getting balanced or not so that's one thing that he does through me i don't know about other mediums okay. but uh, he's going to teach <coughs> in this lecture okay. uh, how to recognize the base emotion and how to recognize the lesson out of it which will also give a great deal of information and understanding for viewers to understand the lessons anything okay. mom anyways you know whatever lesson you decided or you decoded anyways you're learning you know anyways you're learning and you're growing even if it's the wrong lesson you decoded and you end up learning it it's oh, you're good. not yeah you're not losing anything you're only growing and if you want to understand if the karma has been balanced like i said in the beginning of the lecture mm -hmm. you will not feel triggered you will feel indifferent okay that relationship will stop triggering you know i'm not saying you'll become a robo or a zombie and you will not feel for anything in any relationship no, that is not fun at all <laughs> but no i i feel it balance. no he's saying it's just that you will be more in control of your emotions and nobody or no relationship will trigger you you will be at peace no matter what they do or what they say Yeah, I just, just more have the mindset that your emotions are wonderful tools. They're not weapons. Yeah. Don't don't weaponize more, your emotions. Yeah, you'll be more in touch with them. You will be more in control of them. Your right. emotions will not be controlling you. You will be controlling your emotions for yourself to feel that ultimate state of peace. Right. So he's Very saying, nice. Peace. He's saying, "Mom, peace. The day you feel peace in a particular yeah. relationship, you're done." Exactly. Oh, that's great. All right, so you guys can get in touch with Renuka at channelingspiritworld.com. And sorry, I've been distracted because the aquarium people are coming in back and forth for to fix Lucas's aquarium. So anyway, thank you um, very much. I love you, Eric. Love you, Renuka, and I love you all out there. Please subscribe, hit the notification uh, bell, and share with your karmic relationship people. All right, <laughs> love you. Bye. Bye-bye.